My girlfriend needed a bed, so I made this. And I want to show you how to do it. And it wasn't too expensive either. I started with four 2x8s and I tried to find some straight pieces, which I did. But my dumbass left them on the bed of my truck overnight and a little bit of the day. And it was very hot, so they kind of worked. I don't normally build furniture, so there's a lot of learning that I still need to do in this world. I cut all these on a 45. I'm going to miter all of the 2x8s together. Essentially to create a box. Now I measured this so that short to short I'd be like an inch bigger than the mattress. And that's because if you want to put a blanket on there, you know, it's you got some space. Now to add a little bit of detail, I'm going to cut a slot into my 2x8s. I don't know, dado, I don't really know the names, I'm sorry. But yeah, basically I'm making two cuts with a table saw, the width of a strip of wood that I have. And then I'm going to take out all of the material inside of it. And you'll see why here in a second. Because this is going with the grain, it's kind of a pain to get it out. It's not super easy. I tried to break it out here with a chisel. Didn't do too good. So I gave up that idea and switched to the router with a level clamp to the board. This did the trick and worked out pretty well. I can't say that I didn't make any mistakes. The router definitely came out of the line for a couple of them. But I was able to fill it in in the end and it turned out pretty good. You see that I created a slot here and that's going to be for some IP that I'm going to be putting in to create a little bit of a detail, you know. I'm going to blow out all the sawdust and then use some glue and brad nail it. But my phone overheated so I couldn't record that part. The plan was to sand this down with the sander, but I got impatient. This wood is very hard and it was going to take forever. So I got the planer instead. It was a little bit more aggressive. And because I couldn't get it super straight, I just decided to add some texture to it anyways. Trust the process, you know, make it look a little beat up. It turned out a little rough, but I like it. Now I'm going to use this chamfer bit here on the router so that I can break the edge on the top of the bed. I feel like it's you're less likely to hurt yourself if you don't have as sharp of an edge, you know, so that's why I chose to chamfer this. Especially on a bed where you're always climbing onto you. Makes more sense. Gotta love this Japanese pull saw. I actually was recommended to buy this from somebody on social media. So whoever you are out there, thanks for the tip. I really love this thing. It's really awesome. It's also very satisfying to do and to watch um, to use this hand tool. I'll shut up so you can hear it. Now it's time to assemble this thing. Um, <laughs> As you can see, my shop is kind of bare, so we'll make do with what we got. Zero craps given about, you know, cleanliness here. It's just a driveway, an old driveway that's already all marred anyways, who cares. Now to pull this together and hold it in place, I'm going to use some trim screws. And I'll screw them in at an angle, because I don't like screwing it straight into the end grain. I feel like it's a weaker connection. So when I put screws in at an angle like this, I do feel like it's just a bit of a better grab. I'm going to repeat the process so that I create a box essentially, screw it all together and now I'm going to measure for the middle pieces so that I can have something to put the mattress on. I went with some 2x4s for the middle supports. <laughs> now this bed did turn out a little heavy but I had to split it in two anyways because it's a king side mattress and there's no way I can get that whole thing inside of any room I've tried before. I'm ripping a 2x4 in half to create some ledgers and that's basically going to serve as a place for the 2x4 supports to sit on. I'll add some glue to each ledger strip and then attach it like an eighth above the bottom of the bed. Now I'll go ahead and install the 2x4s I cut earlier and basically I'll be adding two to each half. One at the end and one kind of split in the middle symmetrically so that I have three even spaces. I added about three or four screws to each 2x4 on each end doesn't need a lot because sitting on that ledger already as is, but you know, why not overkill, I guess. The two halves are assembled, so I'm going to take them inside. It's getting late. And that's what you're going to get. Now, I've puttied all the holes from the screws and all the gaps and imperfections. And now it's time to sand. My girlfriend is sanding here. The bed's for her, you know, so you got to put her to work a little bit. I'm joking. She definitely wanted to help. She's sweet about that. Once the bed is all sanded, I'm going to go ahead and add tape to the IP that's in the middle. And that's because I want to stain the rest of the bed, that's the pine, 
and I don't want this thing to go through the pit because obviously that wouldn't make any sense. I would have just kept the whole thing in pine if that's what I wanted to do. The tape is slightly wider than the epay strip that I put on here. But that's okay. I'm going to fold the whole thing up in a good line. And I did that so I could see what I was doing because it was hard to do it with the blade. But once you fold it, you can just cut it like this and you get a pretty straight line. It worked out really well. Once you cut it, you got to push it tight with your hands so it's sticky. Now I'm going to repeat the process on the whole rest of the bed. I also added a piece of your bed to the middle between the two halves for some extra flare. So we'll tape that as well. And of course we got to do both sides. Can't leave the other one not taped. Once the tape is on there, I will go ahead and stain it. I'll do two coats of stain. Especially with black like this, I never get everything in one go. I mean, I can try all as I might. Just better to do two. You get a more thorough finish. While I was staining one side, my girlfriend was doing the other, the other half. Look at her go. She's so fast. I need to hire her. And that's what you get. You know, looks pretty good. Now, you, I got some imperfections here, and you can get a razor and clean it up if you like. If you ever do this, but if I'm being real, I did not do that. It didn't, except for like very obvious spots. Now I highly recommend this next step, but you don't have to do this. I put two coats of um, epoxy or resin on the bed. At this point, you could go with just a polyurethane or something of the sort if you would like. But the epoxy really, really protects the bed over the long run of its life. You know, just a much thicker finish, and I like that. I don't remember if I put a coat of epoxy and then sanded and then did another one or if I just did two coats, one on top of the other and then sanded in the end, but either or works. I worked myself down all the way from a 120 to a 400 grit here on the sand. Now I did over sand in a couple of spots, but since it was black, I just used a marker to touch it up. And then I did one final coat of polyurethane semi-gloss to the bed after the epoxy was sanded. That's just because I like that finish more than I like the epoxy finish. Now it's time to assemble this thing. As you can see, I did it in twos because there's no way I can fit that giant bed in this apartment. <laughs> I would have been struggling. Not to mention how heavy this would have been, you know? Now this joint looked like crap. Um, when I was chamfering that top edge, a giant flake came off of it. And the wood was bowed on both sides. These two 2 by 8s had quite the warp and you can see I had to pull it in with some giant screws. Didn't turn out very good this one joint. <laughs> but I'm going to put it on the side that's near the wall. This other joint turned out a little bit better. Um, the wood wasn't as bowed and it didn't have that flake. That's it right there. And there it is. The bed is done. It's in place. And there's move. 